Hey everybody, Eric Spites here for The Gamer, joined today by George Foster. Hello! While we take a look at Mario and Luigi Brothership. George, what, what? let me um, let me present a world to you. Ooh, yes please, okay. go on. I'm gonna paint a picture. Uh, a connected world shattered into separate worlds, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, heroes travel from world to world to reconnect them. On their adventure, they discover a darkness that is corrupting the people of these worlds. I'm I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Does this sound like something you might be interested in? This sounds like something I might really be interested in. Is it Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> this is Mario and Luigi Brothership, and I can go way deeper in the, on the overt connections but then i would get into like heavy spoiler territory mm -hmm. but the more i played this game the more i was like this is just kingdom hearts and to be honest maybe that's just the way my brain is wired and i can't help but see kingdom hearts and everything i mean me too me too I'm there with you. <laughs> but this is one reason uh why i'm very biased to uh brothership i think it's great and not everyone does Yes, maybe I've you, been surprised. Maybe you've the, seen the a little bit of a mixed reaction to this game. I guess to set the stage, let me first say that I love Superstar Saga. I played it to death. Very formative. I dabbled with other games. I thought Bowser's Inside Story was fantastic. I skipped Paper Jam. I played some of Dream Team. I definitely played uh, Brothers in Time and thought it was whatever. So I'm not like the most hardcore uh, Mario and Luigi fan, but I have always felt like between between Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario, Mario and Luigi is the superior Mario RPG. Wow, really? Yeah, I think like I appreciate the style and the humor and the gameplay variety in Paper Mario, but as an RPG, I have always felt like Mario & Luigi was the more interesting of the two. I love the active combat, the, um, the, the way it takes turn-based and makes it something that you have to really engage with every turn. You have to be, your timing has to be right. You have to be focused on uh, attack patterns and it's just such a cool way to approach something that I think is usually pretty boring mm. and is especially boring in Paper Mario. I'm with you. I to this day the only Mario RPG I played is Super Mario RPG and I adored that. I thought that was fantastic. And I've just yeah. never Paper Mario's just never grabbed me. I have wanted to do a Mario and Luigi game for a while and when Brothership was announced I was like, "Ooh, there's my chance." I still haven't yet. Mm -hmm. you seem very positive on it so this game's really cool so i you know uh, while i wasn't super into the whole series i was still pretty disappointed when alpha dream shut down hmm. and when yeah. brothership was announced i had a lot of i was pretty apprehensive because cool. you know who's making this thing do they get mario and luigi are they going to be able to capture what makes those older games so cool, so much fun. I think Brothership totally does. And I think mm -hmm. that in the way it is different from the classic oh, yeah. MLs, it improves on the formula in a lot of ways. And there's definitely going to be people that hate the change. There's definitely a purist mentality around these games. And I, as I guess I can appreciate that. But if you aren't too attached to the like very minor specifics of how those games worked and you can just look at this one with fresh eyes i think i think it's easy to see why uh some of the things that changes are like really positive so you think would you say more for a newcomer then or do you just mean a veteran that can get over changes well, I mean, it's a Mario game. There's no, there's not really a barrier to entry here. There's no, there's know? no skill ceiling. Nobody's gonna be like, oh, I didn't play the older ones. Am I gonna be left behind? <laughs> like, there's, uh, there's some nice references. Uh, it is definitely a sequel. It's not like some kind of reboot. Like, there's Mario and Luigi exclusive characters and storylines that that intersect 
with this one. Um, at the same time, just like all the other games, it's like a totally standalone adventure and it's telling its own story in a new world. Uh, and so you're not, there's no way that you're going to be lost mm. playing uh, uh, this if you haven't played the other ones. But uh, if even if you haven't played the other ones, like if you're interested in turn-based stuff and you want to play something that has a, a very different take on turn-based combat, this one is, is it's really cool. Um, I, I love that all of your attacks need to be timed and all of, and you need to avoid or reflect or counter, you know, incoming attacks in a turn-based game. I think that's yeah. really cool. And I don't know how many other turn-based games have things like that. No, the, honestly, the only one that comes to mind for me, well, there are a few, but the one that jumps to mind first is the South Park RPGs. Yeah. That are surprisingly good. That have no right being that good. Yeah. Uh, I am not a turn-based fan at all. It's a great shame of mine. You know, I'd love to get into the original Final Fantasy VII and be like, yeah, this is one of the best games ever. But I've just never been able to. But making it an active turn-based, like, I'm in. That, that instantly yeah. gets me more interested. So, I, man, I have, there's so much to cover here. This is a really big game. Um, I think that's where I want to start, actually. The only thing I know about Brothership from what you and I have talked about is that it's very long, right? Like, surprisingly so. So it was... 54 hours for me uh and i will say that generally speaking like when you know when you google like how long to beat i, th yeah. I think that's a website how long to it beat? is okay i am always over the over the estimate always no matter what the game is like you take um, longer or you take less time always take longer mm. always take longer than the whatever that website says is the average i think to the point where I think that website is wrong a lot of times. <laughs> it's um, not. It, it's not me. I'm not the problem. I saw multiple reviews that mentioned playtime, and it seems like the negative ones finished it way faster than I did. I'm not. I don't know what that means. I'm not making any connection there at all. But I did notice that the the negative reviews said th that it took them. 30 to 35 hours while it took that me is a 50, big difference. 54 did do, hours. Did you do everything or was that just a pretty much? No, I didn't do literally everything, but I was, I was guiding. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm the only one here that played this game before it came out. Mm. So I had a lot of work to do. So I, I wasn't just playing the game. I was also getting my screenshots and yeah. testing things and doing all the side quests. I did. I got all the collectibles. Like I really played it out, you know? Mm. So I, it does make sense that my playthrough was longer. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's significantly longer than the other Mario and Luigi games. And that's, I think that's going to turn some people off, but it has to, it's turning me off. Like you, you got to sell me up a bit because yeah, Long and games, and what's uh, more, I think it doesn't start getting good for like ten hours. I've heard that a lot as well. I've seen that around. It's one of those. That's that's one of the hardest things to yeah to argue against if you tell someone it's good after ten hours. I know, which is like a that's a thing about RPGs all the time, right? Yeah, but, of course. But the the thing about Brothership is it it introduces a battle mechanic. They're called battle plugs. And it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in a turn-based game. It is How so. How do they work? What are they? Okay. What are they? Okay. So, battle plugs are, um, they're buffs, and they change the way attacks work. So the simplest ones are like this adds fire damage to your jumps, or uh, this at this has a chance to make the enemy dizzy, mm. uh, right? Uh, and you plug it in. And now all of your attacks might make the enemy dizzy. But what makes them so cool is the way... It's a few things. It's the way that they combine together. So you can, you can plug in multiple plugs, and they overlap, and they, and they combine together to make a new effect. Oh, cool. So, so one, of the, one of the plugs adds a AoE to your jumps. So when you jump on an enemy, it creates a wave that spreads out and hits the other enemy. Right. If you use that plug and you also use the fire damage plug, now the wave becomes a fire wave and it's okay. hitting all the enemies with fire. Okay, but then three things can combine and four things can combine. Oh, God. 
And suddenly you're making all of these elaborate designed attacks where, where a simple jump can now do a, um, do a elemental vortex on the first enemy, create two waves that hit everyone, make all those enemies dizzy, and then drop spike balls on all of their heads to do extra damage. Jesus. Just sounds- just one jump can turn into this whole crazy thing. That sounds kind of broken. Is it is it hard at all or is it so, well balanced around that? So the plugs have limited use and then they go on cooldown. Okay. So a lot of the strategy is about when you're combining them to ensure that the ones that work best together are available. Hmm. At the right times. And this is especially, this especially comes into play during really long boss fights where like your plugs will run out of uses during the fight and you have to plan out when you're going to use which plugs and know which ones are going to be on cooldown and every turn. So both brothers can swap plugs before they act. That doesn't sound sanitary to me, but (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's very erotic. I should have started with that. This is a very uh, erotic video game. All about um, plugs. So you are just nonstop readjusting your plugs. And it and it's maybe that sounds tedious, but it adds so much complexity to what is otherwise Mario's going to jump on that guy's head and then Press that, a to land, and then like, the Goomba's yeah. going to run and I'm going to jump over him. Like the yeah. game could be that and the older games often are just that. And this has so much more thanks to these plugs. It's such a cool system, and you don't get your first one for like ten hours. <laughs> oh. uh, but I, I, love I can it. see why that puts people off. But it sounds interesting from what you've said. I think for me, what always attracted me to the Mario RPGs, and like I said, I've, I've not played many of them. Really, just Super Mario RPG. I played, played. Like I hundred yeah. percent of that. But what's always made them more interesting to me is obviously the story and the the allowance it has for Mario to be a character, right? How does, how does brothership do with that? So I, I really like that. So I, I think in part because of its length, mm. you get pretty invested in this world and its characters and its lore. Um, you know, they're, they're a bunch of Nintendo goofy goobers, but I think you do, I, at least I found myself caring about caring about the plight of these like weird little plug people by the end of this story um and when it comes to like the brothers themselves that this game has a really interesting take because mario is kind of a zero Mm. through this game mario pretty much has nothing going on and Luigi has everything. Yes! <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Year of Luigi, round Luigi, two. Luigi, they reimagined Luigi as instead of the scared brother, he's the smart brother. I've seen that plays into like, he has like Luigi ideas, right? Luigi logic. Luigi logic, okay. So Luigi solves every problem in the game. He comes up with every plan and it's all represented in this cute little cutscene where he's like thinking really hard and it's like (laughs) the camera's like spinning around him and he's like "Hmm, huh (laughs) i got it (laughs) and mario Uh, just never has ideas there's no nothing mario's mario cannot be giving us less through this whole game wow um and so some so luigi figures out how you're going to attack puzzles he comes up with the brother combos like the the traditional like overworld platforming stuff where yes, the brothers yes. have to like work together to do something so in this game they um transform into a ufo and they can fly around they combine into a ball so they can roll mm. uh and then they have they can shoot fire and ice and luigi just thinks of those and then you can do them like that's I, how you I've unlock heard... new powers I've heard some complaints. Now you mentioned Luigi. I'm very happy to hear he's a big part of it. But yeah. I've seen some people say it's a little intrusive how much relies on him. I, I think maybe they mean the Luigi logic, like how often you have to do that. But I wonder if you I, know what that's what that's about. I, I It comes up just enough. That's all. 
all that's my take on it i think it's every time it comes up it's great in fact there's there's a story beat where they address luigi logic mm. and it and explain how it's like this thing that makes luigi special and he has a luigi logic moment about luigi logic okay it okay. is so hilarious he I like, like his little like brain blast he has a brain blast about how he keeps having brain blasts. <laughs> I mean, is it a spoiler? Because I'm now kind of curious. Uh, I mean, that's kind of all there. Yeah, there. The the circumstances of it is a spoiler, but that's kind of all there is to it's it. It's just not like, naturally so, gifted, Luigi. That somebody's like, yeah. Somebody's like, haven't you noticed, Luigi? How you know how important <laughs> you are? And he's like, hmm. <laughs> Mm, I okay, got it. Good. If it wasn't <laughs> you know? 50 hours, I'm that I might know. have sold me alone. Yeah. I, and maybe it's not. Maybe that's just a me thing. Maybe it's more like 35, like other people. Long. Still but, long, man. Um, yeah. And then the Luigi logic is part of combat, too. Uh, so in boss fights, uh, there is a, a point in every boss fight where Luigi notices something in the background and then uses that as part of the fight. So that activates like some kind of mini game. Right. And some way to like stun the boss. So you can do a big DPS phase. Wow. Mario's just doing <laughs> zil. And Mario's just there. And Mario's yeah, literally he, he just He helps there. carry, but wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. this, I think my biggest question when it comes to characters, Bowser has always been the star. Yeah. I don't care what anyone says. I love, I love the interpretation of Mario and sometimes Luigi. But yeah. Bowser's the best character. Is he? Does that happen here? So the main the main Mario and Luigi thing with Bowser is that he gets transformed. He he becomes Dark Bowser or some variant of that. Uh. It happens in every single Mario and Luigi game, and then you have to fight Twisted Bowser. It happens in this game too. Uh, it's the best boss fight in the game. Okay. And then after that, he sulks, and then he shows up when you need him and the end. like it's all it hits all the beats right okay okay yeah as long as he's consistent um, baby bowser has a whole, or sorry bowser jr has a whole arc as well um so yeah i i don't know i think it's like kind of, it's kind of everything you want from these games and i and i am a little bit surprised about well, what, what the, didn't you uh, like i guess i guess is my biggest question then it's kind of minor things so the 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 loop of the game is that uh, your your hub world is called Ship Shape Island, and it's this island that can you can sail around. It's like a boat island, mm -hmm. and uh, the overworld is a bunch of uh, currents on a big sea. It's like a yeah. region. It's a world called Concordia, and it's this big open ocean, and you have to sail Ship Shape Island around to find the other islands. You go to those islands, you climb to their lighthouse, and you reconnect them to Shipshape Island. And as you do that over time, it creates this armada of connected islands that are like sailing around the ocean. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But the actual like gameplay representation of how that works kind of sucks. Um, because basically, anytime you're not in a world, like anytime you're not on a story mission, you have this big mini map of the ocean glued to the screen mm -hmm. and you move around in real time. So when you want to sail somewhere, like the, like the ship is always moving. Ship shape Island is always moving. Okay. And it moves on these uh, currents. So you pick a current, the boat will sail to that current and then it'll just do loops in that current forever. Okay. So like, I don't really get what they were going for with this because I don't really understand. I, I get what you mean, but I don't really get why that's. I don't really get why that's a thing either. Yeah, because why not hat. just why not just let me go to the whatever island? You know, yeah. like I don't need this repre this like representation. And the the real time stuff is annoying because like you can make the island sail fast, but then you're just staring at the screen waiting for it to get. There. Or you can just be like, go here, and while we're going there, I'll go do a side quest. But the timing never works out right. You'll be in the middle of a side quest, and it'll be like, your destination's are arriving, and you're like, what? Should I abandon what I'm doing? Because the <laughs> boat got... 
Like, it's really weird. I don't like that how... That is weird. I don't really... I, it, I feel like it's something I need to see to understand that it should not be that complex for... It's it's way Traversal, too right? Yeah, that's, yes, that's weird. It's very annoying. Uh, and the other thing is, like, the, because the boat's always moving and they move on these loops through a current, like, if you send the boat to go to a current where your next destination is and then you go off to do something else, the boat is just going to loop past it over and over. So every two minutes, you're getting notifications like your destination is arriving and then you pass it and then you come up it again. Your destination is arriving <laughs> just nonstop. Like I can't do anything else. It's just like, hey, hey, we're here. We're here. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know why they did that. I don't like it very much. No, it doesn't sound very good. It sounds kind of intrusive for what could otherwise be a, a, a unique system. It just kind of sounds like it's clumsily, clumsily it is. done. It is clumsy. And then at the end of the game, spoiler, you can just teleport anywhere. And so like, so it doesn't I, matter. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I spent a lot of time like exploring to find all the like secrets around the map. And I should have just waited to the end of the game when I could teleport anywhere. Oh, and just That's yeah. killer. That is yeah. bad. So that's that like when at the end me. of a game you get like a collectible finder. Right. And it's like, like oh, okay, great. well I wasted a ton of time like <laughs> exploring. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, you know, the bros attacks like have always been pretty shallow. It's just like the cheap one does less damage, the more expensive one does more damage, and there's not really a good reason to pick one over the other. It would be really nice. You know, like the first one you get is single damage, and then everyone after that is AoE. And it would be really nice if they actually had different uses so you could have a reason to pick one or the other. But Otherwise instead, just it's just like the, the strongest one each time. You just see right? the strongest one all the time. Yeah. Mm. And that's always been a problem. And I, yeah, they didn't really do anything to make that better. Um, And it's really long. But, you know, it it's long in a way that like, like a game can be long and also dull where everything's predictable. You can see the path ahead of you. And this definitely could have been like that because of this structure of go to an island, reconnect it to the hub, go to the next world, like jump world to world. Mm -hmm. And while it, the first half of the game is just let's reconnect all the islands, there's a whole second half of the game that goes in directions you can't predict, you mm -hmm. know? Um, once you have connected all the island, you would think that would be the point where the game would end. And that's really the halfway point. And on top of that, you know, th these aren't like totally unique biomes. Like there's the jungle one, there's the lava one, there's the ice one. But it has a lot of thematic and tonal shifts uh, from place to place. Like one of them is like a detective murder mystery story. One of them is like a espionage stealth puzzle world. I mean, that's more original than mario usually goes yeah they're they're they are kind of like reinventing the the gameplay from from world to world in a lot of ways some of them are like really platforming focused some of them are really puzzle focused hmm. um and it it yeah I, I i thought it was really cool to see all, all the different worlds um throughout the game yeah. so i i'm really positive you do you this. seem pretty happy about and, it and to be honest i I will admit, like, long games tend to have a sort of, like, Stockholm Syndrome-y effect on me, where it's like, Even this well, I've, time. I've played it so long, it must be good, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like um, it's like in Community, when they're making the Dean's movie, and Annie's his assistant director, and she's, like, completely lost her mind, and she's like, the Dean must be a genius, because if the Dean isn't a genius, <laughs> then what was all this about? It's sunk cost <laughs> fallacy. That's what it is. Yeah. And so maybe I have to at least confront that that could be a possibility that it's like, well, I play this game for 54 hours, so it must be a good game. Mm. But um, I don't but know. I, I think you, you just sound pretty. I, I don't think you're overselling it. I think it sounds it sounds good with issues. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just cool and charming. I really didn't have tech issues, which is interesting because I'm really sensitive to that stuff. That that hurt my uh, Link's Awakening, and to be honest, my uh, Echoes of Wisdom. Like, 
I thought both those games chugged, and I, I can see frame rate issues, and, and I saw them occasionally, but it really wasn't that bad compared to a lot of, of other Switch games I've played. I remember Link's Awakening when that, the, yeah, when that came out, I was a bit a bit surprised by that. Yeah, it's shoddy in some ways. It just has a lot of good variety. There's a. Very close to the end, there is a like psychological horror sequence, which is it's one of the boldest things I've ever seen in a Mario game. Like it goes full horror <laughs> for Mario. For yeah, Mario. Okay, okay, yeah. Let, let's not get out of control here. Yeah, uh, it's like Mario and Luigi trapped in a nightmare dimension that is looping over and over, and it's really well done. It's really cool. Man, I just. I keep hearing in my head. I keep going like, "Yeah, let's do this." And I hear fifty hours, fifty hours end of year. I know. I it's so shallow. And I've played longer games than that. I will play longer games than that. Yeah, but it, it, I think I I guess for me it's like people waited a long time for this. People thought this was never going to happen when yes, Alpha Dreams 100%. shut down, and it's been so long. Like you know, we got remakes on the 3DS of the first one and of Bowser's Inside Story. Inside Story, yeah. Um, but like Paper Jam was the last one, and what was that eight, nine years ago? I don't know. Like long people time. have been waiting a long get- time for this, and I think they're not going to be disappointed. I think that's the important part. People, if you have been dying for another Mario and Luigi, I think this one kind of rules. Yeah, and maybe that's, is... that's what this is, right? Like it's that's what people have asked for. That's what they're given. Yeah. And I think for me, the most interesting thing is the plugs. The yeah, the plugs are great. Really awesome. They sound like a great way to mix up the combat. The plugs are great. You can absolutely nitpick the th- some things that are different from the older games, mm. uh, but I think I think those things are either better or didn't bother me. Yeah. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, so yeah. Yeah. Brothership, man. Brothership. Uh, yeah. Any? You got any more cues? No, I think I think I'm pretty set. I. You know, we're a bit early in. Would you say this place is on Eric's Ooh. Game of the Year list? That's a toughie, I know. Ah. But it's always what comes up in November. I know. This has been a really good year, man. Yeah. I I am once again trying to think about, like, January, February games, and I can't believe that that, that they were this year. That yeah. I played, like, I played Prince Animal Persia. Well this year. I played Prince of Persia this year. I mean, those are Animal Well, maybe number one. I know. Yeah, we had... We had some real bangers this year, and I have also recently been playing stuff that I'm I'm pretty moved by. I'm still thinking about Indiana Jones mm. coming up, so um, I think at today, yeah, this is in my top ten for the year. Today, yeah. for sure, it is. We'll we'll see where things go from here. But I mean, I gave it a I gave it a four out of five or a four and a half out of five. I gave it a, I gave it the old nine ninety percent. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. I'm going to have to check it out. I'm going to have to check it out when I get 50 hours free, which is (laughs) maybe next year. As soon as you get 50 hours free, (laughs) definitely check this one out. All right, gamer. Thanks for the chat, and thank you for listening. That's it for this video. We have my full review linked down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and visit us at thegamer.com. That's the gamer. No spaces.